Blakes of the Hollow has been a place that people come to since 1887. It's been closed, well, for the guts of a year, give or take a few weeks here or there. And we're here today to discover some really nice stuff, some of which hasn't even come out yet. Now, the reason we're here, and we're here with Bernie Blake, proprietor of the, the, the establishment, uh, to discuss whiskies that you can only get here or the associated off sales. Mm -hmm. Bernie, isn't that correct? Yes, that's it, Marty. Yes, we're um, in the extended part of the hollow here because of restoration work going on in the actual bar. So this bit is kind of um, gothic featured a bar called the atrium to the back of the original Victorian part. And so this was, the original building was built in 1887? 1887. The original bar, bar uh, as in the hollow bar, was refurbished in 1887 um, by Richard Herbert, the then owner of the bar. So. Uh, and it sits, and it's called the hollow because it sits in the, just it sits, in the hollow. It naturally the sits in the hollow of um, Enniskillen. Main Street is divided into oh, six or seven different bits of streets, which causes no end of confusion for <laughs> tourists coming to the area. But the hollow naturally sits in the dip of Church Street. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it, you know, known to people far and wide just to the bar as the hollow the hollow <laughs> yeah yeah uh, now it's on seven levels yes um uh, back about 22 or three years ago um my husband and i pat and i we bought from our first cousins uh, the bar yeah you know there's a danger that the bar would go out of the family business or out of the family name so we decided well we would take it on board and at the time, we saw the potential, having visited a couple of outlets in London and um, across Europe, uh, to do a kind of a multi-level, multi-entertainment bar space. Yeah. And um, we worked with Frank Ennis, who is an interior architect designer, and had great rip-roaring time <laughs> tootling across different the flea yards of uh, Paris in particular, to collect all sorts of interesting bits and pieces, which were then used in really unusual ways, like the area that we're standing in here at the moment, the ceiling. The feature or the detail on the ceiling was actually replicated from a feature on the front face of an old French wardrobe. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. There's, you know, it's a great place that when you come in and you, you uh, spend time in it and you remember, you know, the fun we had in collecting all yeah, the various I'm bits and pieces. I can imagine. Uh, now, you pointed out something to me uh, as, as an architectural feature, little meeting points. Now, mm. this is a design. This is actually design. Just think of this, people. When you are, you think, oh, I met, I met my wife in a bar. Uh, she was coming down some steps and I stopped to let her come down. That was designed. Bernie and that had it in mm -hmm. mind. So, in, I mean, purposely, I mean, Frank Ennis, as I say, who is absolutely a fantastic uh, character, and his real skill lay in his ability to design and create spaces within very narrow, compromised buildings and yeah. spaces. And um, this area, which essentially was the backyard to the hollow proper, um, was not conducive to great big open function spaces. So within the space then, his ambition was to create meeting and greeting turning points. Yeah. So that if you came to a bar on your own of an evening, that you had the potential opportunity to meet somebody on little narrow staircases or passing wells because being the gentleman, you stood back to let the lady through. J Justin would yeah. probably just barge yeah. on up, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> If there were, if there what are you talking about, Barry? <laughs> what are you absolutely talking about? Yeah, we, I think we recognise him from being here before. <laughs> I mean, that, no, uh, it's a, but it's all these little things. These details are fabulous. They really are. Now there, you're getting lots of work going on in the place. Um, just everything being refreshed for the reopening again. Yes. Well, a couple of interesting uh, new features. Um, sadly, we lost our chef restaurateur earlier during COVID, 
um, Jerry Russell, who ran successfully ran uh, Cafe Merlot and Restaurant Number no. Six here in the building. Um, Jerry was a multi-talented, multi-awarded chef, and you know his reputation was well known. So sadly, he passed away, and we've had to. Um, we've got a great new tenant coming in, Glenn Wheeler, who. Uh, has also successfully run restaurant 28 on Darling Street here in Enniskillen. So Glenn and his wife Zara are really enthusiastic and excited about coming to the building. I'm sure they are. And there is work ongoing at the moment just for them, you know, a clean sweep to put their own little trademark and identity yeah. on what is already a well recognised space. Well, I mean, the space, this, I mean, the space is listed inside and out. Yeah, the, the hollow is listed yeah. inside and out, not this part that we're standing in in the mo moment because um, this is completely new, dug out of the ground. It runs over seven levels, uh, but it, 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 yeah, so it's all piled. The whole building here is literally just... They still have it doing this. In, in, <laughs> thankfully, we, we don't want it doing that No, we don't. Moment. We want it full of people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But um, as I said, back to our concept for the place was to create a multi, um, a multi um, leveled environment that you could have food, drink, dancing, entertainment, and you know we try and possibly to meet the person and in, exactly, the lady in your dreams. Yes, you know? exactly. Meet, whereas the <laughs> hollow is a unique space because yeah. it is untouched and has been untouched since eighteen eighty seven, except as. Um, to, to keep it oiled and polished yeah. and all General that maintenance part of it. is what we yeah, say. Exactly. You know? But no, I, I, the, the, the hollow is a beautiful, beautiful bar. You actually have one of the Game of Thrones doors made from the Dark Ages. Yeah, don't we? There was a very exciting story before that door arrived here in Enniskillen. The uh, joiner who was transporting the door to the bar um, to, to Fisses carried it on the back of an open trailer. And on his way to Enniskillen, <laughs> as you discovered today, you know, it was quite a trek, but he lost the door in other hedges in County Fermanagh <laughs> on his way to the bar. And it was only when he arrived on the street to offload his door, he discovered that he'd lost it en route. So he had to retrack his steps and retrieve it from a, a ditch somewhere Someone could have had a very lucky find there. Winter is coming. <laughs> but, but now, yeah. if winter is coming, you might need something to warm you up. Oh, there's this an is, idea. This is why we're here. Now, you already launched last year a, a Middleton single cask, and I was lucky enough to come down and taste it. And it I, I wrote a review of it, and basically what it said was, certainly at the time, it was, it, I mean, it's, it's a fabulous whiskey. It's, it's got a lovely sort of f uh, fresh tobacco, nice spice notes to it, uh, lovely cask, cask influence on it, uh, and, and a really wonderful length. And I wrote at the time that it was probably as good an Irish whiskey as you were ever going to get. Mm -hmm. And it was only from, you'd only get it from here. Um, you still have that for sale? Yeah, we still have a limited number of bottles left on it. Um, there were only 180 bottles in the cask. Yeah. Um, it was bottled that strength at 53.1. And sadly, you know, COVID happened and we didn't get the opportunity to continue promoting yeah. our... And our ambition all along is to try and give people who have um, had their first drink with their father or their grandfather here in the bar an opportunity to buy it yeah. ahead of the international investors. Not saying that we wouldn't like some international investors to come We like international investors yeah, just because there's them. anybody there. <laughs> but um, the tradition in the bar yeah. here with people, you know, considering it almost like an extension of their own home, yeah. it was an opportunity for them to maybe to get into it. So we didn't, we weren't aggressive in our sales and we knew that we were bringing out um, some of the other products afterwards as in the Powers 19 year old. Yeah. Um, so that we'd have something still to talk to a wider market about having a little bit of the Middleton left over. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what they say about it, other than it is a fabulous thing. Now, price-wise, it is at a premium. But Irish whiskies are at a premium these days, folks. Yeah. So. Well, it was laid down in 1991 and bottled at 26 years. Yeah. 
and it is at the moment seven hundred and ninety five pounds. So there but, you go. Uh, International investors take note. Yeah. Now these these things are the prices of these are just climbing at the minute and there's lots of people to sell these things on the secondary market. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it is why, why should the people who've invested the money in it to start with not reap that reward as well? Yeah. Now, well, the, the point that I'd like to make at that stage is that um, like we're very true to the hollow here mm -hmm. and that any monies that we gather and collect from this goes it's going back, back eh? into the bar. When you get into, uh, we've yeah. seen the work, there's work going on all over the place. We saw it on the way in, Justin and myself. Justin actually tried to do, was going to start wiring plugs up and stuff, but he said <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Now, you have, a, you have a couple of other product to talk about at the minute, which is this rather mm -hmm. lovely bottle. This is, this is the front facade of the, the bar. Uh, this is a par 19, Par's 19 year old single cask release that you have. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, well again, uh, with the, the bar being the unique place that it is, Irish distillers um, asked were we interested in buying into single casks and we thought yeah absolutely you know we'd love to go along and do that. So the only cask of a 19 year old uh, Par's that was available was laid down in 2000 and we said yes that we'd love to we'd love to have it and um, the packaging came about then because we said that we really would like to have the front of the bar which is iconic mm -hmm. um, used for the packaging and I have to say uh, in the few weeks that people have seen this that front packaging has been a really big it hit. Has, I mean, looks, people have identified fabulous. with it the world over, and yeah. we've been getting calls from literally every corner of it's, the globe. Now, th this has been on release for many weeks. Well, we actually have had no formal release at all. Uh, we decided because all of the work was going on in the bar that we'd just try and sell a couple of bottles and see what happens. Now, <laughs> there was. About two hundred and two hundred and thirty balls. One, two, three. Yeah, two hundred and thirty balls. We'll just say for easy counting. No formal launch. How many's left, Bernie? I'd say as of this moment, where we're speaking, probably about fourteen or fifteen. Now, any international investors or people wanting to put stuff on uh, collectors and market, uh, put it on <laughs> auction houses. You need to go quick. <laughs> um, where can they get it? Yeah, well, at the moment, um, because the bar is closed, we've been selling it through our off sales in Derry Lynn, which is um, called the Crush Grape on Main Street in Derry Lynn. I'm there three days in the week. In the run up to Christmas, I'm there every day, so I need a break <laughs> at this time of the year. So I do three days uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, fabulous. Now, we said we were going to get warmed up because it's a little bit cold in it here. It is cold in here. There's and no what we're going to get warmed up with is something a little bit special. You might have noticed this Par's white label here. Now, this is, it says on this, this is 10 years old. There's a story behind this. Actually, it's, it's about 15, 16 year old what's in the bottle. But because of labelling at the time, it had to be labelled up as this. What's the story of the John's, uh, the Par's John Lane? John's Lane, yeah. Well, for all of you guys who know a lot more about whiskey than I do, uh, John's Lane Distillery now is closed and has been since 1980. Um, it was in Dublin, right down just off the Liberties. And Irish distillers uh, closed up their um, distilling facility. But at the time, or before that, for the number of years before that, to distinguish white label from gold label, White Label was dispatched out around the countryside in bulk mm -hmm. and it was then bottled by various outlets and one of those outlets was uh, William Blake from Anna Limited, the hollow. Um, so it would have come in in bulk and then it was bottled here and sold from the bar, both yeah. back bar, this is a, an original back bar bottle, it's a big 40 ounce bottle and also then to the local customers in yeah. an off-sales um, situation. And as I said, to distinguish it from gold label, it was bottled in a white label with our information or detail on the label. So after John's Lane closed, uh, my husband's family had um, 
to remain in stock of some of their white label and duly put it away. I mean, thank heavens, yeah. I mean, they're, they're hoarders and <laughs> <laughs> in an old fashioned sense, but at least they kept good things. And there was a great danger a few years ago when I was clearing out stores that I didn't discard this, thinking it was something that, oh, that yeah. old stuff has been hanging around yeah. there while we need I to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there are um, 160 bottles in their original bottle and the original bottle is a 75 cl bottle mm -hmm. in their original closure they have not been touched or interfered with since then uh, at all i, I mean they're yeah. moved around <laughs> and kept uh, yeah. safely and that's yeah. it the angels have got nothing out of the bottles they're all totally intact basically they're pristine pristine Totally. Now, I have this in my glass. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, it's got a lovely, lovely light perfumey smell, hasn't it? It's got that, it's got, a, it's got a nice sort of fragrant. You would still easily recognise it. You would recognise it as a pot. You would. It's got, it's got a spice, but it's a very light, almost white peppery spice. It's, you know, it's got that sort of nice. It's just easily left it. I think for something, well, this bottle has this bottle has been open now for a very, very long number of years. It hasn't failed anything sitting. Mm. Again, there's that cereal note coming through. Then there's a nice touch of banana there. Banana. There's a nice okay. touch of banana there. Um, on the development, there's cinnamon coming on through, and a lot, of, mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of clove mm -hmm. coming through in the back bit there too. Um, and you're the expert on the whiskey now. I'm afraid I let you do the critique. Oh no, no, come on, Bernie. <laughs> I'm enjoying drinking this. Yeah, that's a there's little touches of licorice there as well. So there is. It's, it's got that nice spice coming through. There's some tropical fruit, but it, it, it's more like a banana um, coming through. Maybe, maybe slightly baked banana. Um, it's really, really, really quite nice. You can only buy this here. Mm. Well, at the moment, people don't know about it yet, or very few people know about it. Possibly the people that I've had the opportunity to speak to while you know we've been um, talking about our Paris 19-year-old and the Middleton over the over yeah. the last 12 months. But uh, really, um, we were waiting until we got some of these products up and running to get the bar and the fact that we are doing single casks talked about to generate a little bit of interest across the globe because this one has got a number of uh, collectible features. Lots of collectible yeah, features, let's be exactly. honest. Exactly. I mean, it's a very, very unique product. It is. And it, like it's all fully authenticated. All the certificates and everything are all in place. It's. Um, you know, Irish distillers would love to get their hands on this. <laughs> I think Irish, Irish distillers would have been quite happy to buy this back again, I would have thought. Um, you didn't sell it back. Now, it is for sale. And because of its collectability, mm -hmm. it does carry a premium price. Yeah, well, dictated to, I think, by Irish distillers, they, they have suggested that it should carry a price of 5000 a bottle. 5000 a bottle. Mm -hmm. Justin, I, I've got your share here, Justin. I mean, <laughs> hang on. Oh, it's lovely, Justin. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's, mm. the, it's, um, it's that the collectability aspect of it. I mean, in terms of a whiskey, um, I know people who have tasted it, like you know Billy Layton, Brian Nation, and a number of the other um, guys who have been involved in yeah. making Middleton all really rated it. Uh, it's they it's thought lovely. it was a fantastic whiskey. And some of our local, uh, Joe McGurr, who makes the Boatyard, um, who has been aging and maturing some spirit as well yeah. for whiskey, he recognised immediately um, its age. And, you know, he did the blind testing. Yeah. And I was very impressed with his critique of of the various products. Um, well, <laughs> it's nice just to taste that little bit of history. Uh, mm -hmm. There's not very many other things that you can do that with. Whiskey's one of those things that I, I like to say it's immortal. It doesn't go, you know, it, yeah. it, it yeah. can't go off really um, if it's kept properly. And and well. At a time of COVID, when, when plague and pestilence rages around, having something that's immortal is not a bad thing <laughs> at all. <laughs> now, so we've done Middleton. 
pars, pars again, and you've decided to go away with the birds. You're going with the red breast. Mm -hmm. Well, we thought we'd try and complete the family, um, and uh, we wanted to have something for everybody, if you like, in the group, because not everybody, obviously, is going to be able no. to afford some of these higher ticket products. So um, red breast in recent years, well, Middleton in recent years has become very highly, highly collectible. Really so has. we thought that we would like to do something in that. And ours been a 1991, 26-year-old uh, makes it stand out in the crowd mm -hmm. as well. Um, the red breast, in comparison, uh, will probably uh, come um, around about 350, 60, 70 yeah. pounds. I'm not sure. We, yeah. It hasn't been bottled yet, so we're not sure of the exact figure of where it'll finish it's, up. It'll be coming in a, sort of a couple of months' time. Exactly. It, uh, hopefully, when the bar is up and running again, we'll have some sort of launch yeah. and that we'll, we'll take the opportunity then in launching it to then hope for more. we thought we'd have a lot more of this left over but clearly we won't have yeah. uh, but it'll, it'll be an opportunity for people right across the world now we'll be talking about the bar talking about um, the products and hopefully yeah. we'll also you know be able to buy into a little bit of hollow history yeah I, th I think you've got a wonderful lineup the bar it's not looking its best just at the minute because the work's being done. I've been here before and it is a fabulous place. It's, it's got lots of history. It's got, I mean, a unique range of products. It's got something for everybody, food, little meeting places to meet a wee special someday. Um, a bit of Game of Thrones, a little bit of history. Um, what's not to like? Um, I look forward to seeing the red breast whenever it comes out. Um, uh, Bernie, it's been wonderful coming down, and thank you very much for for having us down. Well, thank you very much, Marty. I mean, it's great. Always good to see you, and hopefully, uh, we'll see lots of friends uh, from from your part of the world in Fermanagh cool. this summer. <laughs> hopefully, and uh, Justin, bottoms up. Ooh, don't please, Justin. Mm. Don't. I can buy a boat with the money that that bottle you're going to buy. <laughs> uh, there, it really has a lovely. It's aroma. lovely. It really has.